Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Build. Now this time we're building Arendelle. So what's Arendelle? Well, for those of you that don't know, or who haven't seen the movie Frozen, it's the castle and town that Elsa and Anna, the two main characters, live in. It's a really kind of picturesque, Norwegian kind of castle kingdom on the border of some snowy mountains, nestled in a kind of river bay. And so what you see me here doing in the background is, with World Painter, a really cool and useful tool by the way, and if you want to know what World Painter is, or if you want to check it out for yourself, you can Google World Painter and it shouldn't be too hard to find. So what am I doing? Well I'm basically mapping out the topography and the landscape of Arendelle. Now this is a kingdom nestled along a river, inside a kind of snowy, mountainous, piney region. So what we've got here is this small little kind of ball at the bottom of this bay, which we've which we kind of coated in, in stone, you see here now. That's where the castle itself is going to sit, and I've got a whole bunch of reference images opened up so that I can see exactly how the map lies. Now across from the river on the left, behind the castle, is a whole bunch of kind of mountainous region that you can't see. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a rough layer of mountain that borders the river, kind of like a steep ravine. But whatever's behind that isn't really important because what we're focusing on is the castle itself. So I filled in the area behind it with just some random kind of grassy hills. Modified the terrain on the mountains facing the river a little bit, so that it's, you know, like a bit bumpy and not too steep. Added a whole bunch, bunch of forest region behind those mountains, and then got to work changing the biomes of the landscape around Arendelle. Now, when you change biomes in World Painter, all it really does is change what color the grass is. And once I had the biomes set up, I again built the region behind the main hills of Arendelle. And again, this is a region that you won't really see apart from from a very far distance, if at all. So I wanted to create a few nice, tall, snowy peaks behind the borders of Arendelle that you'll see in the background, but we'll never really get close enough to until we build Elsa's frozen fortress. But for the time being, all we're working on is Arendelle, the castle, and the village that surrounds it. So once I'd coated the snowy peaks behind it in a layer of snow, I went in-game and took a look at what our landscape looks like. And here you can see, this is the kind of rocky plinth that we're going to build the castle of Arendelle on, and it's going to have a bridge that leans out towards the mainland and hooks up with a small little village kingdom. There's going to be walls as well that go around the outside of this area and border the kingdom. Right, so now we're in-game, and the first thing to do is to change the cobblestone on the main rocky island into stone. Because what we did is we set the area to rock, because in some texture packs, cobblestone and stone together make a nice little kind of rough cobbly kind of rocky texture that's a bit different from just plain stone. But we've changed texture packs for this build. We're using something called Halcyon Days, which is a really kind of nice medieval texture pack that has some cool wood textures and a lot of connected textures and quartz changes that'll help us build a more medieval kingdom. Right, so first things first, we've got our, we've got our little plinth, our little stone island that we're going to build the castle on. But first, before we build the castle itself, we need the foundations. And to build foundations, what I like to do is use brightly coloured wool for the different parts of the castle. So you see here I'm using pink wool for the turrets and, and, the, and the guard towers along the castle walls. And then I'm using the blue wool for the walls themselves, and the yellow wool for the gates and the decoration around the edge of the walls. Now I used Minecraft circles to map out these guard towers. And one thing I've learned from this build is that when you put down foundations like this, it can seem a lot smaller than it actually is. Now, this, these seem like quite small foundations for the castle, but the truth is, once I build these towers up, if I keep them the size that these pink circles are, they'll actually be really fat and stubby. So basically, I'm sticking to as many reference images as I can when I build the walls and the foundations for the castle of Arendelle. We've got this large circle on the edge here, 
which is where there's a large kind of drum tower that doesn't connect to the main castle itself, but it's definitely a feature along the walls. There's also this square tower that I'm using yellow wool to create. And again, I cut and paste the tower at the back just to increase the space we have inside the castle grounds. So again, I had to move where this yellow square was, where this yellow tower, the square tower is, to make sure everything matches up. And then I cut away slightly at the edge of the rocky island, just because this rocky island shouldn't connect too much to the land. And it was connecting too much, so I used an airbrush to chip away at the rock, and then fix the water with a weld edit fix water command. And now it was time to fill in the blue wool segments with how thick the walls were going to be. And I thought a thickness of about five blocks would be perfect for the outside walls of Arendelle. Now again, I added the gate section to the wall at the back that connects to the drum tower, copying the same style as I had at the front, and then filled in with some more blue wool the rest of these outside walls. Thickening this wall area here, where it gets a bit jagged and a bit diagonal. And here you can see the finished, pretty much, foundations. Now this is going to change, because after I started building, I realised my proportions were slightly wrong, but that's something we'll come back to fix later. Now here's some examples of some of the cooler new textures that we'll be using in Halcyon Days' texture pack. You've got here some cobblestone, some wood, some sandstone, and then stone brick here on the left. But at the top there, you see that kind of white and brown wood? That's actually quartz. But what quartz is in this texture pack is this nice kind of Tudor panel effect that's going to really help us design some cool medieval houses. One thing that's wasted in texture packs is materials that you won't use. And quartz is something I wasn't going to use unless it was retextured. So it's really cool that the texture pack has retextured that to something I can use. Now I planned out where I was going to put the main castle itself because this place has walls at the moment and I've retextured I've, I've changed out the wool around the edge for cobblestone and stone brick. But what I haven't done is plan out the castle in the middle. This is the main house itself. This is where Elsa and Anna are going to have their bedrooms. This is where they're going to stay and spend all of their days until, well, I don't know, whatever happens in the movie. So using pink wool as a rough outline, I set out the main castle building. Now the castle kind of climbs up and gets thinner as it gets to the top. It's, it's, it's still very much like a house, but I've used these yellow pieces of wool to map out how that's going to climb up. And the blue wool there is really useful as a guideline of what the middle is going to be of the castle. Now one edge of the castle has a round kind of drum tower, and so I'm using red wool here to map out where that's going to be. But the castle is going to be something we touch when we're done with the walls and the towers. So I thought before the episode ends, I would come around to one of the corners and start building one of these towers. Now it seemed okay as I was building, it didn't seem too thick and it didn't seem like it was reaching too high. But when I was done I realised these towers were actually much too big for the castle's size. The proportions were all wrong. So next episode, between the end of this episode and the next episode, I'll be coming back to change the size of these towers. But it's a good, uh, it's been a good experience and a good test to see how I want to do the towers themselves. Now when I was looking at reference images, the roofs of these towers are blue. But the brick I have to work with is nether brick, which is red. So I'm probably going to retexture that to be a bit of a lighter blue. Now the tower itself climbs up the same thickness all the way. Until it gets to the top, it gets slightly wider. And there's a rim of wood, struts on the outside and panels, much like the tangled tower. And inside the dark wood, there's a lighter colour of wood, and then that's capped off with a kind of blue tiled peaked roof. So after I'd done this dark wooden effect, and put the light wood panelling inside the centre, I added some struts along the side of dark wood to make it connect to the tower a bit more, and to promote that feeling that it gets wider. Then I came around to the sides of the tower, and because it looked a little bit straight when it was just a straight cylinder, so I chiselled away at the tower to make it look a bit thinner. 
but again, it didn't quite make it look thin enough, so I'll be coming back to this after the episode to make it even thinner and possibly shrink the top of the tower as well. Now, once the wooden struts were in place and the tower's height was correct, I came around the top with these nether brick steps and began to do a normal peaked roof. Now, there was no real curvature to the roofs on the castle of Arendelle, so I stuck with a basic pyramid structure of just going up block by block with the stairs. And it took me some time to get it right. Doing a peaked roof like this always takes a long time to get perfectly symmetrical. And even then, you can always be sure that you'll miss a block here or there, but you can always come back to it and fix it later on. And there you go, one tower complete. All that was left to do is, because all these towers are identical, I could literally just copy and paste that one tower onto the other locations. The one difference is, a couple of the towers are smaller, or rather shorter, than the remaining towers. The two at the front that face the mainland are actually, I think, a little bit shorter. So I came around and I cut off a few layers, a few bricks of those, and you can see me doing that here, and just modifying the height of these towers slightly. But there you go, you can see the towers are complete. Now you might be saying, whoa, those towers look way too big, but don't worry, before next episode we'll be coming back and shrinking the towers, but we've made a good start on the Castle of Arendelle. So if you want to see more, hit like and favorite and subscribe, and I'll see you next time for some more Let's Build Arendelle. Take care.